In the Arabic language, any word must be a branch of another root word. Those root words consist of three letters, four letters in rare cases. The word Islam is derived from the root word Salama. This root word is the same root for other words like submission, purity, and peace. Istislam, Salama, Salam. The meaning of the word Islam is formed of these three mentioned words, submission, purity, and peace. If a person fully submits himself or herself to the Almighty God alone, worshiping Him purely, he or she will live in peace and harmony in this life and in the life after. So, a Muslim is someone who submits to God purely? Literally, a Muslim is not the follower of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Literally, a Muslim is someone who submits to God purely, worshiping Him alone, associating no other partners with Him. This definition includes everyone who submitted to God and followed His regulations revealed through His prophets at any time. At the time of Noah, those who submitted to God and followed His messenger were Muslims? Yes! At the time of Moses, those who submitted to God and followed His messenger were Muslims? Yes! At the time of Jesus, those who submitted to God and followed His messenger were Muslims? Yes! At the time of Muhammad, the same, yes. All those who submitted to God, associating no other partners with him at the time of their prophets, are Muslims. Before talking about any beliefs, we have to talk first about five relevant issues that are highly important to Muslims. First, every human being is born with a ready nature to submit to God. Muslims believe that submission to God is part of any human being's inner nature. We may liken the human being here to a computer set, which is manufactured with a simple software allowing it to submit to God. The only difference here is that we are supplied with free choice. We can choose either to click on the icon and run the program or not. This leads us to the second point, which is that Human beings have free choice. I chose to be here talking to you, and you chose to be sitting there listening to me. I choose my dress, I choose what I eat, what I drink, whatever I do is my choice. Our deeds are our choices. It's true that we don't choose when we are born or when we will die or in which culture we live, but our deeds and our beliefs are a matter of our choice. For Muslims, beliefs are a matter of the heart and the mind, and these are free elements that have complete freedom of choice. No compulsion in religion. This is the third point, and those are not my words. Actually, no compulsion in religion is part of verse 256 in Quran, chapter 2. God here is stating that no one can ever force another person to believe in something under any condition. This verse came as a defense for one of the Jewish youth. I'll tell you. Before Islam, some families, when they didn't get boys, they made a vow that if they got one, they would Judaize him. Later, when those families embraced Islam, they tried to force their children to embrace Islam. But God defended them by this verse, no compulsion in religion. Freedom of a choice is what God defended here. Free choice of belief is something that no one can argue against. Even if someone thinks that he could force another to a certain belief, this would never work because who may control the heart and the mind of a person? Fourth, people are born without any inherited sin. If somebody's father took a bribe, then the police came to accuse the son with the father because he must have some inherited genes urging him to commit the same crime as his father. Would this son accept? Would that be fair at all? For Muslims, inheritance happened for lands, assets, money, but never for sins. No one may ever be punished because someone else had sinned. One of God's names is the just. Muslims believe that God never judges anyone according to his father's faults or to his grandfather's faults 
or to his grand grandfather's faults. And God is making it clear, saying that وَلَا تَذِرُ وَزِرَةٌ وَزْرَ أُخْرَى which means that no bearer of burdens shall bear the burdens of another. For Muslims thus, there is nothing so called the original sin. And if there would be, this original sin would be that of Satan, when he refused to prostrate to Adam out of racism. Being Satan, he thought he was better than Adam. He was made of fire, while Adam was made of clay. Racism was the sin for which Satan was expelled of paradise forever. Which leads us to the fifth and the last point. No supremacy or people are equal. No supremacy means that no one is better than the other in the sight of God except for piety. Not for differences in color, nationality, luxury, nothing, nothing except piety. As all human beings are from Adam, and Adam is from earth, Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him said, there is no superiority for an Arab over a non-Arab, or for a non-Arab over an Arab, or for the white over the black, or for the black over the white, except for piety. Now as we covered all the relevant issues, we may start talking about the six main beliefs that every Muslim has to believe in.